Hello and thank you for buying the Hair Shader 2. Uh, what this is is a tutorial on getting you set up with the HD render pipeline if you're using any sort of Hair Shader type setup. Now Hair Shader 2 doesn't exactly convert well to the HD render pipeline just yet. The shader was made using Amplify Shader. I've tried converting uh, the shaders but the way that the lighting works it's not compatible with the way the lighting works in uh, HDRP or any scriptable render pipeline. So what I've gone and done is uh, I set everything up so I was going to use shader graph to make some kind of anisotropic hair effect. A shader similar to what I've made for Unity 2017 and using the, the PBR workflow but uh, there is there's a few teething problems with that as well and they're still working on shader graph so I'm kind of waiting for a few features so that I can get full support with it. Uh, but what I've done is just set up my HD render pipeline as you would, you know, get your uh, your packages, package manager. You want to get your core render pipeline library, install that first. Then you get the HD render pipeline. So HD render pipeline, install that second, and then shader graph is an optional extra when it comes to me actually making a shader graph for the hair shader. Then I will use a shader graph and you can edit that. So if you get those three initially, and I've also gone to the asset store and downloaded, uh, so that's my human shader pack that I've been testing on the hair, but you wanna get the, uh, the Sky Series freebie, Sky, series freebie so sky series I'll just put that in have a search for that oh spelled it wrong sky make them up first sky series so it's the freebie version of this one should be there anyway so if you get if you get that uh, and that just gives you some skies to use in the scene and to set that up uh, I created an empty game object called scene settings added HD um, added the volume script to it so you basically go add VOL volume add that check as global um, I think you create a new profile here it does that for you and then you add a HDRI sky and then you'll add from here add your uh, visual environment which I've already done and then I've moved it up one and that's just based on some tutorials that I quickly looked at today um, so I downloaded the the sky freebie pack and then chose whatever sky I wanted and now all those skies work and as you can see they're really quite nice and they work well with this uh, the anisotropic setup so what I've got is so the, the initial shaders that I had set up um, for the hair shader 2 I've kind of like tried to remake them a bit now this one I still have to add uh, the transparency so let me just quickly do that so opaque and alpha cutoff enable and there you go I've got the, the alpha cutoff uh, I've got a little bit of clear coat in there but you don't need that so much but it looks not too bad you know it uses a very similar algorithm alright you don't get the two banded sort of thing that I've got going with hair shader 2 um, but it's not too bad so you can change the anisotropy value like so and you do get you do get that kind of twin band actually you get some here and there so it's not too bad um, change the metallic and smoothness and things um, the, the anisotropic range don't really have much control of it you just have to like put it up to a certain value and change the smoothness amount to get to get what you want and then with your tiling you just have control of uh, the normal and the texture base there itself and then you can tint the color of it here so it's not too bad it gives you something close to what I'd created initially um, I've got a few point lights in here just to show you how they would affect things can't see it too well there but yeah a little red light coming off that one and the directional light change that maybe to something smaller a lot of it's coming off the reflection so reflection probe 
a distance thing there and how did I make it brighter? I think I just changed the intensity of something. Um, we've got the blend distance here. Reflection probes work a little bit different. Anyway, so I've got I've got these two materials. So I've got a folder called HDRP Mat under materials, and I've just done the Aniso tile here, which is based on a texture where if you look at the texture here you'll see that it's just straight up and down. It's not mapped based on like the actual UVs of the mesh, like this one, you know, where they've, uh, they've made all these different airplanes and things. This is a resource that I found, by the way, so um, just in case you're wondering how that was done, you can look at the mesh and the UVs and such. Okay, so that's basically what I've done. I've set up the material with the Aniso effect, so opaque, alpha cutoff, enable, and change the material type to Anisotropy, and then you can play around with that alpha cutoff, and also the amount that it tiles there. I say it doesn't have the full range of effects that I have working in the uh, pre HD RP, pre HD render pipeline. Um, but I will endeavour to make that move very soon, as soon as I, I see there's enough support for it. So I'm just change the anisotropy value here. Somehow it's still very bright. I've changed something somewhere. I've added these point lights. Let me get rid of those two. Directional lights, maybe a bit strong or something. Oh yeah, the sky itself. So sky. Uh, damn it, damn it, damn it. It's under that setting thing. Exposure. There we go. So I made that quite, quite high. So you can get a bit of extra control with that. Um, lux mode, exposure mode. I'm still getting used to these things, but... Okay, so back to this here. Let me just choose the uh, anisotropy. Okay, <clears throat> so you get the alpha cut off, which is just your old fashioned cut off here. And I guess you could use like a post process for this. So I'm wondering how to use post process. Maybe that's under here, post process volume is global. I guess it needs a profile. So I've made a profile there, add an effect. Let's see. Oh, anti aliasing's not here. Then maybe move that. Okay, so let's see what ambient occlusion does. Just switch everything on there. Um, Alright, I'm not too familiar with how everything's supposed to work here just yet. Um, I can actually see that working. Maybe in the graphics. Graphic settings, project settings, uh, quality, anti aliasing anywhere, isotropic per texture, yeah. Um, graphics, uh, the other way to do it is to install rendering, uh, sorry, packages. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit of time here to find the post processing and install that. Because um, normally you would make up like a post processing stack thing and add it to the camera. So post processing behavior, but it's the volume. I wonder if I can find yeah, this is all a bit different. Sorry, folks. Um, I'm just basically trying to look for some kind of anti-lacing effect. But yeah, I'll 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 check that out later. That's just I'm just trying to get uh, these cut-off things to look smoother. And I guess you would add anti-lacing um, to your scene. It's somewhere. It's somewhere here. I know it is. It's just I don't know 
how all this works just yet. But as soon as I find out, I'll do another update. So, Anisotropic built into the HD render pipeline shaders. You don't need to add uh, Hair Shader 2.0 if you're using um, the HD render pipeline. You can do to use what resources are in there, I guess. And that's just a case of, you know, these sphere and these kind of like generic wigs. This is a resource, so you can't use it commercially. Um, but it's good to sort of try that, try them out first. So we get the smoothness. Uh, the uh, opacity is actually in the alpha channel. Got a normal map there. And anisotropy. I don't look in nicer earlier. I'm trying to figure out why it doesn't look quite as good now. Double sided. I guess you can get the two sidedness there. Uh, one with mirror, anisotropy, enable decal. I guess I've seen what some of these things actually do. Um, Got transparent mode that wouldn't work so well here. Yeah, you get the the old bad uh, depth ordering. You'd you'd think they'd um, have fixed that already, but no. Um, <laughs> sorry. Uh, so you still have the cut off ability, which wouldn't make sense because transparency would basically just use transparency. But you still have the ability to control the cutoff. I guess it's maybe just a way of getting a little bit more contrast out of the alpha channel. But anyway, you want to keep that on opaque and enable the alpha cutoff. Change, uh, change that to where you want. <coughs> and yeah, you can control the anisotropy by texture, the red channel. Um, we could try, there's another texture comes with this, that's this one, and maybe that's got something in the red channel that can be used there, you can kind of see it. Uh, let's try a different colour. Smoothness. Yeah, in my mind, it just it just doesn't look quite as good as what Hair Shader 2 does. Um, these look fine. I mean, these look like they're doing kind of what I want, but there's no way to change the, the tip color and things until I make up a custom shader for that. So in the next few weeks, I'm going to endeavor to make something that works at least halfway, something temporary until uh, all of this is ironed out. A lot of people asking for HD RP versions of the hair shader. It's not compatible, but switch this to anisotropy. Use the textures that you've got for your hair and you can kind of get something. You may have to basically put all the, the tip coloring into the actual texture itself. So, you know, if you've got, you've got this here as your color, then you may want to uh, actually tint things manually, like to add some red. You, you can go in here and you know just paint in some red. Oh, I'll do a layer above and change that to color, or even multiply like that, and you can blow that out a bit. And just increase how far it goes, and then I'll just add a mask and paint black on the mask to act as an eraser like that and just affect what you want and you can do that for like various tips I guess just rotate it around there and then just paint paint in black on the mask Right, and then if I was to save that, 
change that to PNG and I'll just call it base two. Okay, so then you can take your texture, base two, pop that in there, and this should be, oops, did that work? Base two, okay. I just need to say alpha is transparent. Mm hmm. Is that same as that? Uh, I've got transparent. Uh, maybe channels, alpha channel. Maybe I have to save it as a targa to get the the alpha channel. So let's do targa. Yep, here base two. So yeah, if you want to change the tip colors for the time being, you'll have to do it manually. Um, okay, get rid of that one. You see the alpha channel appeared there. This little way appeared, so no, that's the one. I'm going to choose that there. Sorry for the long-winded tutorial. I'm kind of learning as I go here. Uh, let's say change that to white. Then we can see where I've painted that red. And then you can muck about with the smoothness. So kind of wet here, not so wet. Uh, you can move the directional light. Let's see what we can get from that. See, I really like the way these work. I'm just going to check out what I've done here. So I've got alpha cut off, anisotropy, uh, metallic smoothness, about half and quarter. And that's really it. Uh, yeah, that, that, metallic smoothness using the map there maybe I'll just get rid of that there we go and then just change that to what you want and what's that one at it's a tropies at 0.854 so smoothness point 0.2 and then you can change the strength of the directional light, I guess. Or that will be the intensity of the sky maps, the cube maps, which are under the little scene setting thing. Oh yeah, under here, so I'll just do zero, one, I guess. Yeah, I just find it it's quite difficult to get everything perfect, get the sky looking right, and oh, yeah, well, there's the sky there. And can you rotate the light? Yeah, it's not not quite the same as what you'd expect. I think you can rotate it somewhere here. There we go, like that. All right, that's not too bad. Using the HDR from that. So it probably doesn't even need the directional light unless you want shadows. And then making that somehow follow the, the sky map, I don't know yet. Um, uh, pass. Mm. Okay, so I'm obviously venturing a bit too far with this. and uh, I'm getting caught up in the, the problems that might arise in the future. So I'd say, you know, for the time being, maybe stick with pre-HD render pipeline when it comes to making your art look good. I will try and get an update soon. I'll repeat it again because I know that more and more people are going to ask for it and it's the reason why I'm putting this video up there is to uh, convince people that I'm having issues with it. I'm still learning the, the shader, shader graph system. It is missing certain nodes. I can't get um, some of the, the nodes that I need to make the anisotropic effect. And I don't think shader graph is supporting... Um, let me just open it up. I don't think it's supporting anisotropic nodes yet. Let me just see what there is. Yeah, so there's no anisotropic. Um, I could try and make up a new shader, uh, da, 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 shader, PBR. Yeah, I'm just expecting like a anisotropic graph here. Um, 
don't know how I managed to do it, but it's obviously a mode thing. If I go into these, it's a lit shader, and then the material types and these tropics. So you'd think, I think if I go to shader graphs, create a shader, lit shader, let's try lit graph. Test, I'm just called test. Okay, I've got something here. I've got bent normal, coat mass, metallic. Maybe there's a mode thing. Oh. Ah, okay. Alright, okay, so maybe I can do something with this. Alright, leave it with me. Um, I will get another video out and I'll maybe I could do a little tutorial of making up your own hair shader you know kind of defeating the purpose of me selling hair shader too but that doesn't matter you might use it in an old version of Unity if you don't want to go down the HD render pipeline route I'll try and make something up here that works okay Alright, catch you in another video guys. I hope that helps some people wanting to make the hair shader work in HD render pipeline. So for now just choose the anisotropic and I'll I'll make a nice fancy shader that you can also using the shader graph hack into and, and make your own changes, which should be great. So thanks very much for watching and I'll see you in another video. Bye.